Hey everybody, welcome once again back to our great show called JizzTalking.com. We're on our website, we're on our Zoom call today. With us is uh, Director of Operations, Dan Davis from Exotica. And uh, we're gonna unmute everybody here and uh, uh, we'll unmute Dan for sure, because uh, we wanna hear what he has to say. But Dan, what's going on today? I gotta unmute you real quick. There you go. What's going on guys, how you doing? Excellent, excellent. Uh, let's talk about um, the topic in hand is Exotica. And I tell you what, um, this year had to just be the world's worst year for you guys as far as uncertainty. Um, tell us a little bit about what your role is and what some of the challenges were this year. Um, the challenges were, we uh, are we allowed to swear out here? I assume we are. You, you fucking bet. The challenges is we weren't able to do a fucking show. So... Um, the, our last show was in Oct the end of October of 2019 in New Jersey. We had four shows that were scheduled for 2020, and it was just a constant as, you know, the pandemic kept going on. You know, we were just constantly, you know, having to change things, and people, they're like, oh, why don't you just cancel? And I'm like, we really can't, you know, because we're under contract with a lot of these, uh, these expo centers and venues. So it's been a constant challenge of moving shit. Um <laughs> To say the least, yeah, we actually, you know, telling you guys probably first, we just had a conference call right before the holiday with uh, Miami, which we were supposed to go to in February. But I don't know about you guys. I'm really not looking forward to going to Miami in February when Florida is the third worst uh, state in the country and Miami-Dade County is actually surpassing my lovely state of New Jersey in the total state in, you know, COVID cases. So. And a lot of the girls, you know, obviously, look, our, our thing is, is we always want to give, you know, our fans, um, you know, the talent that shows up to the show and, you know, our sponsors, exhibitors, everybody, we want to make sure everybody's safe. So we're not doing a show until, you know, not only that I feel safe, but, you know, we make sure all of y'all are safe. So, um, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's hard, you know, I mean, you know, definitely uh, puts a damper on things financially for us, but. You know, all we know is now we just postponed that February show in Miami. Uh, that got moved into mid-September, which sucks. And um, our first show now, right now, is scheduled for April um, for our 10th anniversary in uh, Chicago. But who knows? Yeah, that we're talking about moving that one, too, possibly, to You know, because they say yeah, everybody's going to be getting the vaccines if you want to take them, you know, by the end of uh you know, Q2, the summer, the beginning of the summer. So hopefully, you know, that happens. And, you know, it's going to be interesting once we come back and, you know, seeing, you know, what the world's like kind of thing when the world stops burning. Right. And and like you said, you can't cancel because you do have a signed contract with the venue. So it's pretty much they have to cancel, correct? Yeah, it's in a constant state of flux with it. So, you know, basically, you know, we it takes us, you know, everybody always asks, like, you know, Oh, you do four shows a year. What do you do the other, you know, 48 weeks? And, you know, it's a constant thing for us. Um, we're constantly, you know, just working on what the next event is going to be. So, like, you know, typically like this time of year, you know, we'll take this week off, you know, and, um, you know, in a typical and normal year, we'll take this week off and just chill with our families and all that stuff. And once the new year rolls around right after, you know, AVN, um, you know, we just, you know, we go out to AVN and start talking with everybody and, yeah, we're just planning, man. I mean, we're, yeah, we're coming up with our ad campaign for everything and, you know, just really working on everything. So, you know, it, it's kind of sucky in that sense because, you know, we're trying to, you know, just produce the shows and we want to do them. Um, yeah, but again, we want to make sure like, you know, everybody's, you know, 100% completely safe. It makes sense. And, you know, people don't realize what goes into the show. I mean, you know, they only see small parts of it. But, you know, during the year, you know, we have like, you know, maybe a half dozen people that are full time just working on this stuff. But when a show rolls around, I mean, our staff, you know, not even including the talent, you know, but just with the security people and the ushers and the ticket takers and the box office people, all that stuff. I mean, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, probably, you know, we sell out hotels and, you know, probably the hotel, a hundred of those rooms are just our staff. Right, right. That's just. Uh, something I do want to mention real quick before we go on too far is uh, one of our biggest fans of Exotica and AVN. And I'll put his picture up here. Uh, you may recognize it, Jimmy Drama. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy just passed away. Uh, oh, shit, really? 
about December 15th. And I know, Dan, he was a supporter of the adult entertainment industry, a supporter of Exotica, supporter of all the talent. I mean, you couldn't find a better guy who was a supporter of, of this business than Jimmy. Oh, man, that sucks. That's sad news, man. Yeah. And uh, he'd been in the hospital in November. And I saw he had like some bad infection and he got out. I saw the last thing he posted was like December 8th. And then somebody said he, he died around, uh, or I mean, uh, December 8th. And then uh, he died around December 15th. So, oh, man, that sucks. Again, uh, uh, he always wore a shirt that said, I'm kind of a big deal. And he was a big deal. He's about six foot four, I think. So, anyway, but uh, we're sure, sure sad to see Jimmy Drama leave us. And uh, uh, he, he was just a, a real super. He was going to come to Chicago in April and, and be a part of it, too. So I feel bad about that. But, That's horrible, man. Yeah. Hey, Mickey Lynn is with us. Mickey, what's going on today down there in Florida? Speaking of Florida. See my sunburn? I do. What have you been out naked sunbathing? No, I went to a car show today with my family and I got red. <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh, my. I know. Now I look like Rudolph. I should have had it a few days ago. Sorry. What's going on? Hey, Dan. How are you doing, sweetie pie? Hey, Mickey. Long time. Long time no see. New Jersey, right? Yep, yep. So, Mickey, I we had actually met Mickey and I back in my previous life as editor of Genesis Magazine. Mm-hmm. And she used to do a lot of shoots for, like, one of our sister publications, Leg Action, right? I think you used to do a lot of stuff yeah, with. And, a few times. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, she was on her covers in the time, so... It was definitely a, a sight for sore eyes uh, when, you know, we reconnected, you know, through Exotica, so. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry to see that we're not going, we're not, I just got on. What's the news? I heard you talking about it, but you said they're probably going to postpone it. Yeah, we had, a, we, like I said before, we had a talk with uh, the GM at, down at the facility, the venue down in Miami, and, uh, you know, we made, after much ado, you know, we came across a hard decision to you know, postpone that show, and now that's going to be in September. Okay, so it's back to the original date. I think that's when you yep. have it, right? Yep. So, okay. so, so what I'll do is I'm going to have to firm. I can do most of the shows next year, so the, the further you push it that way, I can I can probably do them all. That would be awesome. Yeah, definitely. And I'm sorry to hear about Jim. He was such a sweet guy. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was such so, a sweet guy. Let's bring in no, a couple else? other people that uh, are from Florida. Jorge's with us. Jorge's in Florida. Hey, Dan. Jorge. Thank, thank you for joining. Yeah, I'm, I'm born and raised in Miami. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I guess I'll have to go to another to another venue the closest to me, but I understand. Yeah, we we're pretty severe in the in the COVID cases. No, nah, we'll be, look. We'll be down by you guys. That's where the show started back in, um, you know, shit like 15 years ago, and down in South Beach, and then we did you know South Beach for a few years, and we did up in Fort Lauderdale, and we came back down to Miami a couple of years ago. So, like Miami's kind of even though. You know, I'm born and bred in Jersey and, you know, lived in Florida for part of my life and went to school down there. But, um, you know, Jersey's, you know, home. But, I mean, you know, Florida's in Miami. You know, is like our second home, South Florida. So, yeah, we love coming down there. Again, we just want to come down there and be, you know. No, no, of course. Yeah. There you I go, think, Mickey. I think I, think I went to um, the Miami Beach show many years ago, I guess, when you guys first started. And it was it was awesome. But, yeah, no, do what you got to do, brother. Yeah, we're trying, man. We're trying. And like I said, you know, our our thing is, is like, look, even if there's there's a couple of people that want to be, you know, safe. I mean, people, again, don't realize the amount of time, you know, and especially the money, the upfront costs. Because, yeah, we we cast a very wide net to, you know, get as many people. The adult fans are going to come regardless, you know. Right. You want to be able to be able to come up and take photos. I mean. What do you think? Uh, I mean, they're not going to be very happy if they have to have masks on with us and no, have, yeah. like, stand six feet away from us. So I totally understand the reason oh, why. We're going to make like giant action figure boxes for all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like the football, right? Like the football play, the football. Yes. Well, believe me, we, 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 we've, we've toyed around when this shit's been going on, the ideas that we've had. We've been approached by everybody, you know, oh, you know, why don't you make like, you know, big plexiglass boxes for the girls and you know, do this and that and only let, you know, like 10 people in at a time or what it just the stupidest ideas or do it virtual or, you know, and we're still trying to figure out, look, if there's another thing we do, but I don't know about you guys, but you know, I don't think anybody, you know, 
Like while everybody likes seeing Mickey right here or whatever, I think you want that, you know, interaction in person with, you know, Mickey. So I want to touch, touch and, and hug and say hello and all this. I mean, I went up to Orlando to Disney uh, on Christmas day and we wore our masks and we had to take pictures with our masks on. It's just not the same, but you know, we got to wait. No, no. Yeah. We, we got to be safe and careful and hopefully we'll see what happens in 2021. You know, God willing, everything will be okay. Right. I hope so, right? Yep. Yeah. Hey, Aaron is with us. Aaron's also from Florida. We got everybody from Florida here today because they're all concerned about about what's going on with uh, with the shows. And Aaron, now, uh, what's going on down there in Florida for you? Just dealing with the everyday, you know, everyday grind. Just preparing for the new year. Hello to everybody that I do know, including the very gorgeous Mickey Lynn. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> but. Uh, you know, I'm um, hoping that um, late January uh, I get to uh, hook up with Mickey and her family and uh, finally do our Disney trip because I'm looking forward to it. Dan's already answered my question from the get-go about what was going to happen with the Miami show because I was, I'm actually planning on uh, finally going to an Exotica. Uh, it would be my first one that I would go to, but um if it's being pushed to September, um, do we know what those uh, September dates are going to be yet? Yeah, I'm just looking at my calendar. Uh, the exact dates are the 17th or the 19th. Okay. And um, is it going to be the same hotel that's uh, there on the website now, or are you looking at a different uh, host? No, uh, everything's the same. Uh, the Miami Airport Convention Center, um, that's the best it's point. attached to the Doubletree Hotel. I mean, they're great over there. They've been super supportive. I mean, it just never fails. I don't know if it's Miami or Jersey, which one we have the worst luck with. Um, I mean, our Jersey shows like, you know, Montrous. I mean, I don't know if they, you know, I think some of you guys have been there, right? And it's just, I mean, who would have thunk it? Because, you know, we, here we go. Yeah, we do. We do Jersey. We, I mean, we've done, I think, yeah, probably a dozen cities around the country. Jersey's monstrous. Uh, Jersey, Chicago, and Miami are the three longest running shows um, with it. But with um, Miami, like you know, last year, I don't know, well, in 2019, I don't think everybody remembers, was uh, shit. What was the hurricane that was down there in 2019? Irma? Maybe. Irma. No, that was 2017 was Irma. It just missed like Miami. It was supposed to like pound it. Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, whatever the hurricane, you know, whatever the fuck it was. But um, it was like, yeah, we actually flew down there, myself and my partner. Like, we, we went down there ahead of the hurricane and just, like, batting down the hatches in the hotel because they're sitting there telling us, oh, we're on the same grid as the airport, so we're not getting out of power and we're a shelter and all that. So we actually rode it out at the hotel right before the uh, the hurricane and – it, it was, you know, it was definitely interesting. I mean, you know, Jersey, I mean, we've been up against uh, Superstorm Sandy, um, you know, twice with mayors trying to kick us out of there, you know, and politicians and restraining orders against uh, the show and, you know, Nor'easters and all this other stuff. So we haven't had the best luck sometimes with uh, man-made, uh, sorry, not man-made, uh, natural uh, nonsense, but... Yeah, you know, nothing like yeah, you know, what the world's going through right now, that's for sure. One one question that I have when it comes to Exotica, because I do notice on the guest list that, you know, there's a lot more of the current people, you know, that attend. And of course that's you know, that's natural. But how is the talent uh selected for Exotica? Do they come to you? Do you come to them? And is there any possibility of you know, say like any of the golden age wanted to show up to, to Exotica, if they could just, you know, if contact you or do you contact them? How does that normally work on how you select your clientele? The guests. Uh, there's, there's a big misconception on that. And Mickey can, you know, chime in here too. Like we don't like, you know, people always say like, Oh, I didn't go to Exotica. They haven't invited me. You know, here, everybody's invited. You know, we don't pay any talent to appear there. Um, all the talent that comes or whatever comes on their own, you know, I mean, they're there, they, you know, they you know, do their meet and greets, their autographs, their photo ops, whatever it is. Some buy booths, some appear for, um, you know, various companies like Bad Dragon or 
you know, Fan Centro or Brazzers or whoever the, you know, the case may be, you know, some stars like Mickey, you know, do come themselves. Now, back in, I'm trying to remember what year it was at New Jersey, we did a thing, and this is in my previous life when I was editor of, you know, Genesis and Club. And, you know, you know, obviously, you know, being involved in the adult industry for 20 plus years, you know, you get, you know, a decent, you know, dating myself here, but, you know, a Rolodex of people. And, you know, you would always hit people up. So we did do this one thing the one year. We did, um, we called it uh, the Legends of Exotica. And we did it at New Jersey. And we had an area with it. But all those girls, you know, women, I should say, you know, unfortunately was, you know, they don't have DVDs. You know, they don't, you know, they don't have product to sell. So, like, what am I going to do? And, you know, we were trying to explain to them. The show was obviously a little bit smaller than it is now there. Um so, yeah, we did do like something, you know, like guarantees for them um, that one year. And it was a super expensive process to do. You know, I don't know if we actually recoup our money on it. Um, we've, do, we've definitely done dumber things in our, you know, 15 year, 40 something show history. Uh, but I mean, it was cool because, you know, for me, you know, just seeing all those people under one roof, I mean, we had, <sighs> Jesus, you know, uh, Going back, I'm trying to think here. Jill Kelly, um, Janine, Julia Ann, uh, Vanessa Del Rio was there. Uh, I was taking a break. I'm trying to think who else. Jasmine St. Clair. Um, we had a bunch of the class. Uh, Christy Canyon, Heather Hunter, Ginger Lynn. I mean, it was just it was just like crazy. Uh, Georgina Spelvin was at the show and Iseka. So it was really, really, it was a really cool thing. Um, you know, when we did it, I mean, there was probably, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, unfortunately probably leaving out some people and we try and do it like last year at ABN, you know, I ran into uh, Shane, you know, Shane's world fame. And I'm like, you got to come out to the show. You know, I haven't seen you in so long. It'll be awesome to see you. And, you know, and it, but you know, she's there, like, what am I going to do? I don't have anything to sell. I was going to get Alicia Rio. I even told Alicia Rio she was coming out uh, for the Miami show. She says, come out with me. But, yeah, you're right. Years ago, when we did the Atlantic City shows, they paid us to come out, the company. So it's totally different um, from when I left to when I came back. So now all the girls are charging for their photos and, and all this. So now I'm doing it on my own. So it is a big difference. It is a very big difference. But I like it this way because I can control when I'm there, what I'm doing. Who, what I can do, but I love going to Exotica. So I'm. This is my thirtieth year in the business. So it's like a thirtieth anniversary. So what I want to do is want to get to all of them this year. No, and, and that would be cool. And the, and the really, you know, the cool thing with you know those, you know, having those girls stars there, Aaron, is like, look, we love to have it. And you know, people like, for example, like the Bad Dragon, the Spotlight, you know, that has probably the biggest collection. They're like the company that has the most girls there. Um, and they sponsor that booth and yeah, you know, people that. always ask, like the people that are into the newer stars are just, you know, like, they're like, Oh, why are there so many you know older stars here or the quote unquote mills? And it's like, because, you know, you, you guys like, yeah, you know, like, like Mickey and stuff are, you know, they're professional. They know how to, you know, they had to interact with the fans right now. The thing that you know worries me to a point with how everything's going with COVID and all that is uh, things like only fans. So you have girls that are sitting oh. home and OnlyFans making tens of thousands of dollars a month. I mean, there's stars on there. No shit. I've seen numbers. You know, there's one star. I'm not going to mention a name and blow her up that I saw her numbers making $188,000 a month, a month. Wow. Yeah. I just got off OnlyFans, but <laughs> I still go out and do my, you know, I still go out and see my fans, even though, you know, so I guess there's a difference in that old school us. But right. You don't have to be worried about being harassed at the hotel or pawed on or sign this, you know, 500 times. You, you know, like you say, you can sit at home and, and uh, make some content at home and not to hassle it. That, that's, a, I, that's a question I was going to ask is what's your competitor? Your biggest competitor, I would say, is OnlyFans. Uh, because they don't need to meet their fans. They, they've got them right there. Yeah, but they're lost. They're lost if they don't go out to meet their fans because eventually um, it's going to bite them in the butt because eventually this is all going to end and they're going to need to go out and they're going to want to, um, you know, 
see them and meet them. So, I mean, this is only going to last for so long, and then it'll go back to normal. Uh, yeah, 100% right. And and what they don't understand is, and what, you know, a lot of stars is like, you know, like, hey, you know, how do I, you know, why would I do that? I can stay home and make X amount of dollars, or I can do this or that. And the, the big issue with that is, is like, you know, but you know what? It's like the same reason why girls like feature dance. Like, why would I feature dance? Why would I go work at that? I can stay home and do this. And, you know, no, it's a, it's a sum of all parts. That's how you get bigger. I mean, that's how, you know, you keep it. It's like saying, you know, you know, with us, if we just did, just had stars appearing at the show, we didn't have exhibitors or we didn't have stage shows or we didn't have seminars. It's all the different things that you do you know, that we do that make Exotica the way it is. And it's the same thing with a star, you know, a star is a business, you know, I mean, you know, you're Mickey Lynn, you know, incorporated. You know, I know that's probably not your, you know, thing, but it's, you know, it, they don't understand that you have to do those things, you know, and the more that you do those and the more you invest into your brand and time and stuff, it's going to, you know, it's going to make you and your fans want to see you. They don't want to just see you on OnlyFans. They want to meet you in person, you know? And I noticed that with the webcam, <laughs> like when I first started, I started in show world. So it's kind of like a, a webcam in person. So now, yes, they can see me at home, but wouldn't they want to see me in person and touch and feel and see, you know, shake my hand and say, oh, my God, it's Mickey Lynn. Let me give you a hug or let me get this personally autographed. So there's still humanity into it. So I think it'll come back around once everything is settled. I want to interject just real quick on that, too. The one, one also one problem with OnlyFans is honestly... 70% of the women that are doing OnlyFans, you don't even know who they are. You don't recognize them. They've never done anything except now they're on, you know, with the COVID. And now you've got, you know, Jane Smith doing OnlyFans and they're trying to compete with the likes of Vicky Lynn, Christy Canyon, Ginger Lynn, you know, people that have been in this business for years. And I just don't understand that. And, I agree with Nikki, you know, the old school way of still doing a show where you show up in person and you are signing autographs and you are, you know, getting into photos and stuff with people. That's, that's true fanship. Just, you know, going on somebody's only fans and going, watching their live show that you paid money for. Okay, great. You know, it's almost like popping in a DVD or a Blu-ray. And, you know, and I know Mickey does, you know, OnlyFans. I'm not trying to beat up OnlyFans, but, no, you know, the, the thing is, the, the realization of the in-person experience, that should never go away. And if something like OnlyFans decides to overrun that, and, I, you know, I got to be honest with you. There's something seriously wrong with that. There really is. There should still be shows like Exotica and what, you know, AVN offers and what have you, because there's a lot of people that still want to go out there and, you know, especially collectors like myself and Patrick and Jorge, you know, we, we you know, Charles, you know, we, we want to be able to go out there and, add you know autographs to to the stuff that we've already got signed or start new pieces and you can't do that with only fans well, you know o only fans doesn't give you that type of option it's you know it's not like you need to slip them something through the computer and then they spit it back yeah. it, it just i'm sorry i just i just don't care for that and i know so that was long-winded and i apologize no it's an extension of everything right i mean you know, the, you know, the business is cyclical and, you know, like we always talk about, we do, uh, my partner Jay and I, we do a, uh, a weekly, you know, we started when all this started and Mickey, we got to have you on, on the new year. We did, uh, we started exotica.tv, right? If you go to exotica.tv, you know, which is a website, you can see all the old episodes. And we started, like, we came out like gangbusters. Like we were doing a different show or sometimes two shows a day with different guests and different themes and all that. And it's just gravitated. We have a we have like one syndicated show now that we do. Uh, I think on Thursdays, and we do another one uh, called the Boob Tube with some BBWs in the business, and they do a really really good job doing that. But Jay and I host on Fridays at uh, five o'clock Eastern, and then a repeat runs on that, and it streams live on uh, Twitter and Periscope and YouTube and Facebook. 
and you know we'll have guests on in the beginning it was like all about okay yeah we got to have this one on or that one on and this one's got to shake her ass or tits on there and you know do this or that but the the cool thing was is like you know having these stars on there and doing that and the reason why i'm just bringing this up is you know we talk about yeah we had recently we had ginger on and we had christy on um and you know some other you know tara patrick's been on it a bunch of times and it's really cool. Like they understand the importance of doing it or things like that. So it's either it's the one extreme of the girls that have been in the business for a long time or the women that have been in the business for a long time. And it's the, um, it's the other extreme of, you know, girls that are women that are just starting to get into the business. The ones that are, you know, let's just say, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but there's been girls like we asked, like, man, why am I going to do that? You know, I'm too busy. I'm like, what do you mean you're busy? Yeah. We're the country. And this is when the country is in full lockdown. And, you know, we can do this anytime. We can put you on any one show. We can record it. We can do it live. We can do any of these things. And they just didn't do it. So, look, I get it. Like, OnlyFans, is, it's a way for them to make money because especially, you know, when the pandemic started, you know, girls couldn't shoot. You know, the girls that feature dance couldn't feature dance. The girls that, you know, make, uh, you know, appearances at anywhere in video stores or, you know, doing anything in a variety of ways or whatever couldn't do that and meet their fans or the exoticas or AVN or, you know, other events out there around the world. So I get it. Only fans is a thing. And it's just like another technological thing. Like, you know, when, you know, everybody started doing websites when websites became big, I mean, look, I remember, you know, when websites were just starting out and you got CD ROMs and, you know, VHS tapes. Mm -hmm. And that was pretty much it. Girls feature dance. And, you know, there was basically the East Coast video show in Atlantic City or, you know, the, you know, AVN show, which wasn't even its own standalone show then. It was, you know, part of uh, CES. And they, you know, in both of those shows, that and the East Coast video show weren't really for fans. You know, they were, they were B2B industry only shows. And, you know, yeah, so the girls got paid by the video companies to be there and rep their brands and just give out autographs to these buyers that were, you know, buying for video stores or, you know, uh, you know, adult stores or whatever it was. So, you know, I get it. OnlyFans is just like a natural like gravitation to, you know, I don't know what movie it was when everybody was like sitting on the spaceship and they couldn't, nobody even walked or did anything because they were just sitting there. What was it? Was it Wally or something like that? <laughs> like, did anybody see that movie? I have kids, so. But, you know, the world got so lazy and everybody got so, you know, you know, everybody just got, you know, like fat and lethargic and nobody could even do it. Like I, I'm, I'm guilty of it. I'll sit there, you know, and, you know, tell, uh, you know, my, you know, Alexa device to turn on my lights in my living room or, you know, I'll ask Siri, you know, what's the score of the freaking, you know, of, you know, the giants game, you know, when all I got to do is, you know, look onto the freaking, you know, an app or whatever, but I'm too lazy. I to even push the button on my phone and say, you know, and do it. I got to go, Hey Siri, which is probably going to do it now. So, but I mean, what I liked is when I went to the first Exotica, i never been there. I went to the one in Miami like in 2012. And I remember going there and being away for like maybe 19 years. And people knew who I was. They embraced me and they remembered me. So for them to turn around and, and approach me and say, oh, my God, I can't believe you're back and all this other stuff. Is That's where the in person is good. I mean, I want to do video stores. I want to do everything because I want to get my name back out there. I want to say, Hey, this is, I'm still around. I'm still here. I'm not, I'm not gone. And, and that too is what happened. Um, this is why we started this was because I knew there are girls out there who constantly, constantly flood Twitter with these links. Well, after a while, it's just all noise. I mean, if you see a dozen girls That's with only fans links, who, who cares after a while? So anyway, that's why I started this and on a whim. I just thought, eh, hey, there's a lot of Evans. Why don't I just ask her? And she says, yeah, sure. And I thought, oh, wow, okay. And so I got her and then I booked Kelly and I booked Herschel and I booked Christy and, and it just was just a, um, kind of something to do. And now I've got an expert, got Hypatia Lee of all people. And I've got um, down the road, uh, of course, it's on justtalking.com. You go to the Zoom shows. Uh, coming up, I've got uh, Vanessa Del Rio. I've got Annie Sprinkle coming up, um, talking with, with uh, Paul Thomas. And uh, just yesterday, um, Colleen Brennan says, eh, sure, what the hell. And so anyway, she's going to be on. I mean, so uh, we've got quite a lineup. And, and our group seems to demand. They all say, get the new talent, get the new talent. Okay, I've gotten new talent. 
Nobody knows who they are. And we've got about three guys showing up. And then I've got to carry on a conversation with a, a wet paper sack because I don't know what they do either. So, I mean, that's the, that's the tough part. And Dan, you had a, a deal I saw one night. I watched you and you had two guests on. And all of a sudden, right in the middle of it, one of them just said hell of it and left. I mean. Well, she's, she's notoriously an asshole. So we kind of half expected it. <laughs> but, um, but the other guy. Name rises Sarah, Sarah Vandella. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. But, <laughs> um, but Christy carried the show because she's used to it. And um, so, I mean, she's done her share. She's worked her ass off too. Publicity, publicity is your best bet. Yeah, yeah. And you got to just get yourself. And I don't flood my Twitter account. If you notice, mm -hmm. I don't go out there and put every five minutes. I maybe do it like maybe every half a day. I'll say, hey, remember me? I'm here. Go to, go to my thing or buy this or buy that. And it's better because people get tired. They're like, well, all right, already. Mickey Lynn, we know you're here. You know, um, I'll get to your page when I get to your page. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I had Herschel visit me this summer. And um, since he was here, he just had to get out of LA. He was claustrophobic. So he came out here. I thought, well, geez, as long as he's here, why don't I see if I can book him into a bookstore? Well, so I did uh, a little bookstore in Marshalltown, Iowa. And there was some other guys there <clears throat> who run bookstores out of uh, Eastern Iowa, Quad Cities and Dubuque and Cedar Rapids. And, and one of them says, hey, if you ever know or can contact Mickey Lynn, I got five guys who would crawl through a parking lot of broken glass to see Mickey Lynn. I'm coming up oh, there. Shit, I talk to her twice <laughs> a week on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And so uh, as soon as things clear up around here, guess who's coming to Iowa? I'm coming to <laughs> Iowa. Maybe I could get. Maybe I can make it to where I'm going to the, the Exotica, and then woo. Yeah, I don't think we're doing Exotica Des Moines anytime soon, but uh, you could. <laughs> we we made that mistake with Columbus. Chicago, no offense. Right, Chicago. Right, you're going to Chicago, correct? Yeah. Right now, our schedule for 2021 is uh, Chicago in April, but again, that might move. Uh, you know, if this stuff doesn't clear up, um, we got Miami in uh, September. We have. Uh, DC We're supposed to do our DC show in June, but we'll see if that happens. Our DC debut. I mean, I keep forgetting about that one because we haven't done it yet. We've been planning it for three freaking years, but haven't done it yet. And then obviously our, you know, big, uh, ginormous, uh, Jersey extravaganza in, uh, um, end of October. Jersey? Are you still well, in Jersey? Am I still in Jersey? Yeah, Me personally? Yeah. I was supposed to go up there last week, but everything was shut down again. So yeah, it's we're open. I mean, you know, everything's open. There's a bunch of restrictions on things, but you know, we're open. Everybody wears their masks, and you know, uh, 25 percent indoor dining, and you know, but, you know, and you still have uh, you know, as our governor likes to say, knuckleheads that you know don't you know. Look, I was in the supermarket the other day, and there's a guy there not wearing a mask, and I like said something to him. And the guy's like looking at me and, you know, starts going, you know, like almost like coming at me. I'm like, I'm fucking six, four, you know, 200 and like freaking, you know, 70 something pounds. I mean, you want to come at me about this shit, yeah. you know, yeah. but I mean, yeah, just put your fucking mask on. You know, I got a medical condition, you know, and it's like, come on, man. Really? Yeah. Let's bring Jim in. Jim, how are you doing today, Jim? Hello. How you doing? Good. Question Good. for Dan or anybody? Yeah, I do. Um, just want to say the uh, Zodiacus shows in New Jersey are the greatest. I've been there since uh, 2009, the first one. And, Dude, uh, thank you. Out with. I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. It really is. The question I have is, um, everybody, all the stars that I've seen there have been like, really cool. You know, they want to talk to you, you know, you know, just really want to, you know, have a good time. Is there anybody there that has come there that just kind of like, kind of didn't like, didn't show up down to the, uh, the show, maybe hanging out at the hotel, did not want to be bothered? Or... Yeah, I mean, we've had, like, you know, a bunch of people over the years with that, and yeah, I don't want to blow anybody up, you know, I mean, yeah. like, we do something fucked up, like, you know, like what Sarah did in that, on the podcast, you know, on our podcast. Um, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> it was pretty fucked up, you know, what she did, and and just, you know, to lay, you know, so here's here's what it is, and, you know, just, like, we talk about it on that show, and just, like, I don't know if you saw when we were talking about it, I mean, every week now, I'll just yeah. bring it up, because it's just fun. Yeah, uh, you know, it's become I mean, like a she, sport. She was cool to me, though. I mean, I mean, I met her. Uh, maybe. Oh, yeah, she's been cool to me every other time. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't, know, the, I don't know what happened. So the weird thing was is so yeah we we do the show right and before we go live you know everybody's sitting we don't use Zoom we use uh you know it's a different kind of program 
and everybody will be sitting in there and we'll talk about it with the guests. Hey, what do you want to talk about? What do you want? I want to talk about like, yeah, for example, if somebody's a mom, they may not want to talk, say that they're a mom and they have kids. Um, you know, there's just different varying things that some people don't want to talk about or that they do want to plug. Oh, you know, you got a new movie coming out or you just shot some scenes for so-and-so. All right, cool. We'll, we'll talk about that. And look, half the time we're sitting there drinking, um, smoking weed. If it's legal where you are, depending on, you know, where you are, um, <laughs> it's legal in Jersey cause I got my card. Um, yeah. but, but you know, you, you sit there and talk about it. So, you know, we're just talking about stuff and Sarah's on and, going back even further like yeah there was an incident years ago where we were doing our show i think it was in dallas or uh chicago and oh no i know what it was we did the show in atlantic city for two years and we did the the exotica fan choice awards the fannies i don't know if you guys any of you guys ever went to that or heard of it or watched yeah, it it was good yeah it was yeah we produced our own award show and we had fan base voting for you know that went on a couple months and it was super cool well sarah like got flipped out and she comes out on the red carpet she started flipping out of the red carpet and she basically told, you know, Jay, you know, who's, you know, the majority owner of the show, like, you know, fucking got in his face about it. She had no idea who he was, but she was just a complete bitch to him. So ever since then, Jay can't stand her. Like, we all have people that we can't stand, like Farrah Abraham. I can't stand her. Okay. Come on, <laughs> she's, she's the worst. She's a horrible human being, but I digress. But anyway, so when I told, you know, um, Christy actually uh, championed for Sarah to come on the show because you know, she was talking to Sarah like her and Ginger and Sarah were hanging out one night. So when I told Jay, I said, hey, you know, who's our guest this week or, or so-and-so? I said, oh, we got Christy and we got Sarah Vandella. He's like, oh, my God, I hate her, you know, kind of thing. And so she comes on. So we're sitting there again, you know, pre-show talking about everything there and doing that. So, look, we, we sit there and it was one of those days where they just blend together. And believe me, I, I don't have a substance problem. I'm not an alcoholic. But come Friday or whatever, yeah, you know, for the show, I'll have a couple of my whiskeys and you know, I'll smoke some mood and yep. and that. So sometimes you stammer on words and you know, none of us are professional, you know, you know, radio hosts or anything like that. We try. Um, but you know, and when I introduce the two of them, I said, you know, you know, okay, we got two beautiful women here, you know, our as guests tonight. Um, they've both been doing this, you know, uh, we have, you know, the, the original vivid, we one of the original vivid girls and, you know, adult legend, hall of famer, Christy Canyon and her friend, Sarah Vandella. She got pissed off because I said like her friend and she's just Christy's friend. And we were looking at it and when we we're filming, you know, we, you know, Christy made a comment too, is that. Are you in a hotel? Because you could see the placard on the door that's, you know, for the escape route or whatever the fuck it is on there and, you know, on the on the hotel room door. And Christy brought that up. And she said, well, if you're just going to make fun of me, I'm just going to leave. And I'm like, what the, what are you talking about? And the next thing you know, she was gone. And then, you know, I'm going back and forth with her, you know, in, in I am. And she's telling me, you know, what a horrible person I am and how unprofessional. And don't worry, you have Christy. She's a legend. And I'm just her friend. And I'm like, I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't ever contact me again. I'm like, no problem. <laughs> so that that was like one I will throw into the bus, but we have had people, Jim, that have like, you know, look, there's been a couple of girls. I mean, there's, there's you know, a girl who I shan't name um, that she's actually banned. There's only a few people that are banned from Exotica. Um, her, this, this one star being one of them, but she would come to the show and, you know, she'd, you know, be constantly, there's no live nudity to the show, right? We can get shut down for that shit. And, you know, she's, yeah. you know, flashing her tits or her asshole or whatever the hell she was doing. And, you know, like we, we had, I think she's doing lines of meth on her, you know, or smoking meth in the bathroom or doing lines off of her signing station. And there was just all this other shit with her. So, I mean, you know, that one, I mean, there's girls that have come out to the show and, you know, I guess had alternate agendas, um, why they were in that city and just never came to the show. You know, they just wanted their name on the you know, on the website that they were coming and stuff like that. And any star who comes, you know, send us, your, you know, send in a picture that they're going to be there. If they're, they're going to be there, you know, who they're signing with or where they're appearing. Yeah. So we can just, you know, vet that and we'll put it up on the website and we'll promote them as much as we can. I mean, you know, we have a huge, well, we lost our Instagram account um, about a year ago, which really sucked because we had like a million followers on there, but you know, we have a well over a million on Twitter and yeah, so I mean, we're able to like really, you know, promote it. I mean, we put a huge amount of money into promoting the shows, yeah, you know, with billboards and radio ads and TV commercials when we're coming to town. So, um, where, where do you live, Jim? I know you mentioned you go to the Jersey show. Yeah, I'm in Jersey too. All right, where, whereabouts? What county? Uh, Clifton. 
Uh, okay, I'm in Bergen. Oh, nice. Okay. Right down the road. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, you can't drive like in Jersey, you know, pretty much to get to the event center. It's one, it's one of two highways. It's either the Garden State Parkway or the New Jersey Turnpike. Garden State Parkway doesn't have any billboards. I literally buy every billboard I can get my filthy paws on along the New Jersey Turnpike. I mean, or on Route 80 or 46 or 3. Yeah, all the, the Highway 17. Whatever highway goes to 87, whatever highway goes to freaking Edison, yeah, we have billboards there. So, yep. yeah, and those things aren't cheap. And, yeah, we do whatever we can. So we'll promote a star as much as we can. So we expect that they say they're going to be there. So, yeah, please be there, you know, because your fans yeah, are coming yeah. there and paying good money to meet you. You never know. Yeah. You're right. Show up. Yeah. Hells yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, let's, uh, let's switch things and uh, head to San Francisco for a change of coast and uh, talk to Charles. Charles, hey, how are we doing out in San Francisco today? I'm good. I'm good. Had a nice day and, you know, got up early, donated blood, came back, watched some football. I'm chilling. All right. So I had a couple questions for Dan. Dan, well, I, I went to Adult Con in LA. That was a lot of fun. How come Exotica? Do, I have two questions. One is how how come Exotica doesn't come out to California? And I understand it's probably cost and you know everything else. And the other question is how did you get started in doing this? Aside from being a being a working for a magazine, I'm just curious. Uh so with uh, so your first question with LA, we did LA actually for two years. We did it in 2010 and 2011. Uh, we did it downtown at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Um, the show, believe it or not, like yeah, we were on the heels of uh, you know because I used to do. I mean, adult cons, adult cons, a small thing. We like we like kind of laugh at them. Yeah, I mean it's you know it is what it is. Yeah, with that kind of thing, and you know not to like shit on them really, but they shit on us all the time. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> uh, Renaud, I don't know. I've only been to. I've yeah, no, uh, the owner of that show, like, uh, cyber squatted on our domain names before we did uh, the, the LA show. So we had to, you know, we had to sue him to get our, you know, our name back, you know, because we're a trademarked uh, entity. So anyway, we did it. We did it for two years there. Um, the response, the attendance was, you know, sparse. It was a really super expensive city, even though everybody lives there. Right. The venue was really expensive. The cost of advertising, all that stuff was expensive. You know, most of our staff, believe it or not, is based out here on the East Coast. So, you know, getting everybody out there and stuff, too. Um, it really sucked. Uh, you know, year two, um, you know, the highlight of the show was going, you know, the night before uh, the Saturday night. Yeah, you know, we got invited to the Playboy Mansion. So that was fun. Oh, wow. every, boy's, every boy's dream. But, um, you know, that was, I think, my one highlight with there. But the, the interesting thing was, yeah, you know, we do Ladies Free Friday and – Somebody actually hit us with a class action lawsuit saying it was discrimination um, because, you know, it was a man, you know, saying, like, why did you, you know, not have us, you know, that. And, you know, of course, you know, believe it or not, it costs more to litigate it um, than to just settle with this person and our insurance company and everybody just settled with this guy. But, you know, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we don't go out there. I mean, we did Portland. Uh, that's why I think we met you, Patrick, right? You know, uh, two years ago. Yeah, it, um, I've been to a couple before, but no, but that's where I, you and I first started talking. Right, I think, right, yeah, right absolutely. Um, yeah, you got Herschel out there, and yeah, we did Portland. Um, yeah, it was cool, but it just it just wasn't as well received or whatever. I mean, you know, Jersey, you know, for whatever reason, is our you know is our biggest show. It remains our biggest show as far as you know sheer numbers. Um, Chicago's you know probably second. Um, you know, Miami's, you know, usually a pretty strong show, but Miami comparatively, you know, to the Jersey shows about half the size of it. So, but you know, it's crazy. So with that, um, you know, we'd like to, you know, do, you know, we always, people always ask us. The other thing is, is like the biggest question we always get to Charles is like, why don't you, um, you know, why don't you do a show in such and such city or this city or that city? And the funny thing is, is like, we've explored like a lot of cities, you know, as far as doing it, but a lot of them there, you know, they just, the venues just don't want us. A lot of the venues are either, you know, state County, um, city owned properties that, you know, I mean, you know, if you Google exotica Dallas, you know, yeah, I won't go into the whole story, but it was a huge uh, thing that, you know, we sued the city of Dallas because they fucked us over. You know, we had a contract and they didn't want us back there for year two, even though year one was super successful and there were no incidents and no problems. Even the chief of police even testified to that. And, you know, we were in a big lawsuit with the city of Dallas. The very first year we were going to do Jersey, 
um, you know, we got into, uh, you know, shit with uh, the mayor of this town called Secaucus. And that's, you know, we had to move the show within 10 days down to, because they, they, they filed a temporary restraining order against us of doing it. And 10 days, we moved the entire show and event to you know, where our home is in Edison down there. Um, and, you know, it was, that was a blessing in disguise, I guess. But, um, you know, there's been things over the too. years. Huh? A lot of work, too. Oh, dude, that was that was a nightmare and a half. Um, I won't even go into that. But, you know, so a lot of cities, like, even though, like, you know, like, you know, you know, hey, I live in, you know, in Iowa, you know, why don't you do Exotica, Iowa, or why don't you do a you know, show in San Francisco or, you know, Phoenix or here or there, you know? So, I mean, we've got it, but it's just a matter of two finding that venue. Um, you know, the second... Go to, Palm Beach. go to West Palm Beach. It's a nice big convention center with a nice hotel there. They don't want us. They don't want we, we, to. No, we've, we've hit them up in the past too, and they didn't want us... Um, yeah, you know, where we started in South Beach at the Miami Beach Convention Center, you know, we wanted to go back there when we decided to do Miami again. And they said, no, we're not taking you guys back here. You know, even though we had, I think, five, six, seven years, something like that, that we did shows there. And there was no problems. And we were great tenants and, you know, paid them what they wanted. And, you know, never, yeah, you know, there was never an issue with it. Um, you know, so it just depends. Um, how I got into this thing, uh is you know kind of a story I, I came from a music background so i used to be um a tour manager and i you know went to school for journalism and english and i you know, i used to work for music magazines and you know when i came off the road from touring with bands and then i started talking to uh i started freelance writing for this magazine called hip parader i don't know if anybody remembers it remember it was like a, that, yeah. it was like a heavy metal well, magazine well. from you know way back when and the company that owned hip parader and another metal magazine called faces i wrote for and it was owned by this company magna publishing group which owned a bunch of magazines um it's like the, the publishing group that was bigger than we owned everything basically at one point except for penthouse playboy and hustler you pretty much name the magazine you know we had right. a swank and genesis and club and high society and Sharif. yeah yeah so we did those out of uh, lovely paramus new jersey and yep, we own Shave too. I believe that was one of ours. There was so many titles. I think at one time at its peak, there was like forty nine titles or thirty nine titles. I'm sorry that we did. Wow. It was nuts. So anyway, I did that. And while I was working over there, um, one of my old buddies well, at the time was uh, that I used to tour manage his band. Uh, this band called Biohazard was Evan Seinfeld. And when I was working over at the magazine, we were launching the magazine. We were doing a contest and. We wanted to have, um, you know, celebrity judges and Evan was, you know, popular on that. And he was on that show Oz at the time and everybody knew him. So he was one of our guest judges and another one of our, you know, we were just sitting there talking and he was looking at one of the magazines that we had there and he saw some pictures of Tara and he's like, oh, who's this chick? You know, she's beautiful and, you know, and all this. And I made the mistake and luckily Tara still speaks to me and we're still super tight to this day. <laughs> but they got married, ugly divorce, but... <laughs> Um, but while that was going on, when Jay uh, Handy did the very first Exotica down in Miami Beach, what year was that? Jesus, uh, 2006. Um, was you know he had gotten you know he had he had three stars there or four stars or maybe five, but main stars were Jenna, Tara, and Ron Jeremy. That's when um, skinny, really skinny. <laughs> and it was like it was you know those were the ones there and. You know, Evan, you know, say, hey, you got to do this show down in you know, Miami. This guy's, you know, this kid's doing it. This guy, Jay. And Jay's, you know, 10 years younger than me or something. You know, so, you know, he started that show. You know, I think he was in his you know, 20s or something or late 20s. Um, but, you know, he's there like, I couldn't do it. I was, I had a previous commitment with a, a show thing that was going on in New York at that weekend. So, you know, but he's there like, oh, you guys got to sit down and talk. And Jay's based in Philly. And, you know, so we met up at a a comedy show like one night in dinner, you know, him and his wife and me and my ex-wife and, you know, we just got to talk and, and you know, we became quick friends and, you know, he's there like, look, yeah, I really love you to work on these events with us. You know, I said, look, I'll do what I can, you know, contribute what I can. Um, you know, cause I had a full-time job at the time and all that stuff too. And, you know, that wasn't my thing. And as the years went on, you know, and, and, and circumstances changed and, you know, and our relationship changed, you know, became more of a part of Exotica and, you know, we just like, you know, just over the years, you know, just did it. And, you know, when I, when the, the publishing company, because, you know, magazines, you know, 
unfortunately, uh, you know, fell to the digital age, which kind of sucks. So, um, yeah, we just went to, you know, they just said, Hey, you know what, we're done. We're not doing this anymore. You know, if you still want to work freelance for us, you know, we're going to publish it. You know, they're not even doing anything anymore, really. And I just said, you know what, now I'm just going to, you know, work on, you know, some other things and, you know, just, you know, just concentrate all my efforts on, you know, what is exotica and, you know, we haven't looked back except for this year. So, you know, it was kind of interesting and, and, you know, it's definitely, like I said, it's a job. It's not, you know, I've had like many, I've worn so many different hats in the adult industry over the years. I mean, you know, editor, um, I actually wrote a, a, a screenplay for a movie, uh, for, for vivid. Um, I was a producer on a couple of movies, uh, with Adam and Eve and, like these movies, uh, there was a series of them called Deviants that won some AVN awards with Tegan and you know a bunch of people. I wrote this movie called Stood Up with uh, the Reverend Bob Levy. I don't know if you think anybody who's like Stern fans. He's a you know, comedian that we did with Vivid and that got nominated. Um, yeah, but did that. And I mean, I did a non-sex thing in a Stormy Daniels movie just as a goof one time. And, you know, it was on an Adam and Eve uh, pay-per-view series. So... Yeah, so this is definitely probably the most normal out of the jobs in the adult industry I've had. You know, I never did anything other on camera, so my hat's off to those people who do. Um, but, you know, it, it's just, you know, it's just cool. Like, you know, I mean, it's the people that you meet. And the, the funny part was, I mean, I had never heard of Genesis Magazine before I worked for it. And I know it was like a big magazine in the day. I heard Swank just because it was always a running joke because it's a funny name. Right. You know, half of these magazines, I didn't even know, you know, some of the stars. I knew who Jenna Jameson was. Um, you know, I knew who, you know, Ginger Lynn was, but more because of the Charlie Sheen shit. I never heard of Christy, you know, really before that. I mean, I knew who Seika was because, you know, I found like some, you know, some shit from my fucking stepfather, you know, and it was like about Swedish erotica, you know, things with Seika. Or, you know, the first movie I saw was with Marilyn Chambers. I mean, but my, you know, who I knew in the business, you know, was you know, minor and, you know, it's just been really cool now, you know, getting to know people and getting to know the history of it and the people that you meet, you know, not, you know, at the shows, especially like, you know, that sucks about Jimmy, man. I mean, he was, you know, he's a sweet guy. You know, we always saw him at the shows and, um, you know, there's some, you know, like, you know, over the years, like, you know, Jim South passed away, you know, not too long ago, which was super, super sad. And, um, you know, it's, it's just interesting. And I was just, you know, with, um, you know, a business partner of mine, uh, you know, <laughs> COVID uh, makes a man do some weird things or whatever. And I decided, you know, I got to make some extra money or whatever right now, you know, and, you know, and occupy my time, you know, doing something productive. So, you know, a friend of mine from town here and I, we bought a Italian deli and, you know, so we're in the process of weirdness over there, like testing out sandwiches and, you know, and, you know, doing that because we're opening up this week. So, yeah, you know, like my birthday is you know, coming up this this coming week. I'm going to be you know, 53. God help me. Um, thank you. But uh, it's you know, you know, it's just interesting, man. You know, just like the things that you know. When I just think back of your life and just the people that you meet, and just like talking to my partner before, you know, and with the deli thing, he's like, I said, I got to cut out of here. I'm going to do a podcast. You know, and there's going to be you know, you know, some adult stars that I had mentioned. I didn't know who was definitely going to be. I knew Mickey was going to be on and then mentioned Mickey's name. And, you know, he knew who Mickey was. And I didn't know if Herschel was going to be on or not. You know, and he's like, oh, Herschel, man, that guy's a fucking legend and this and that. And, you know, Mickey, yeah, she's yeah. so hot. And then, you know, <laughs> and, you know, so it's just it's just like, you know, it's cool. Like, oh, you know, these people. And it's like I downplay. I mean, you know, Jim knows, you know, kind of, you know, the area I live in. And it's like it's small towns around here, man. And it's like. You know, like one hat when I was doing, you know, my kids are younger. I was like president of our fucking little league, you know, and nobody knew what I did. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, some, this one found out and that one found out. And my son comes home from school, high school one day. He's like, Hey dad, some kids were busting my balls. You work in porn. And I'm like, no, and, you know, I produce adult, you know, trade shows, you know, or trade shows for adults. And, and, you know, he's like, Oh, they keep busting my balls. I'll tell your dad to give me a job. I'm like, dude, trust me. They're jealous. You know? When they're 18, I guarantee you they're going to be, like, asking you for free fucking tickets and, you know, this and that. There's nothing wrong with it. My son just turned 18, and I finally told him, but he knew all the time. Yeah. And he was like, my son's friend came over, and he had on there, I love hot moms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And, so I'm like, I, oh, oh, hold on. I'll be right back. <laughs> and, and when Herschel was here, I just only use his first name. And, and, and some posts I had, and, and one of the gals in town, we live in a town of, of 4,200. And one of the gals says, I know who your friend Herschel is. I'm a big fan and I'd like to meet him. So I, I run him over to her house and I said, we'll be over in about 20 minutes. She says, what do I ask him? I just said, just say that you've seen all 1,072 of his movies. Oh my God, I couldn't say that. But anyway, he, he met a few people. Then by the time he left, I'm getting text messages and everything else. Hey, I want autograph picture and da, 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 da. But anyway, it, it was, it was dicey. I mean, it was a risk that I took and, but he was here not to flaunt anything. He was just here with a friend. So Happy. Okay. And he's a, he's a, he's a person. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So and, you know, orange stars are people too. Yeah. And that was the thing with Portland was that had all the ingredients of being something big. You got uh, more strip clubs per capita than any city in the United States and just bars with naked women in them and and this and that and a, a pretty liberal town but it just boy i don't know what happened it was the same weekend as the, the, the rose the festival Rose fleet week it, it, was, it was just a you know it was just a horrible time to do it and you know and yeah you know, look you live and you learn i mean you know and we may go back there someday we may not you know you just don't know but you know, the interesting, like, yeah, you know, with my kids is, yeah, uh, my son's 18. I have a, and my daughter's going to be 16 in February. And, you know, like I just, during this whole thing, because, you know, now it's like, you know, for the most part, you know, even though we're based out of Philly, I still work out of Jersey. I'm not driving to commute into Philly every day. You know, so, yeah, but my kids would be in school. So, you yeah, know, but now with COVID, you know, they're around the house when I'm on a call or, you know, on a Zoom meeting or, whatever it is. And, you know, look, I just said, you know, Hey, I got to do it. And my daughter just looks at me and started laughing when I told her and she's there, like, I'm like, what's so funny. And she's there. Well, I was getting my nails done with my mom, you know, my ex-wife and somebody came in wearing an Exotica shirt. And, you know, she goes, that's your dad's company. <laughs> like all pissed off. And then she saw like somebody, you know, and over the years, like very few people in the business have met my kids. I mean, right. you know, it's a different part of it and stuff like that. And, you know, used to be, I'm still, I'm, yeah, but, you know, with uh, Stormy and her ex-husband, you know, Maz, and, you know, we were super tight, and, you know, we would go down to Disney, and, you know, they lived in Tampa at the time, and they would meet us over at Disney or Universal, you know, they'd be up here, and they'd stay over here, and, like, Stormy still jokes to this day, like, you know, like, you left me alone with your daughter, and I had to change her dirty diaper, and I didn't, you know, I hated kids at the time, you know, and, you know, so my daughter like walks in when all the shit was breaking with Stormy and she looks at the TV and she's looking at it and she's there. Wait, is that, you know, and then she says Stormy's real name. And I'm like, uh, nope, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Philly, Eric Monty, uh, former star of the 80s and, and uh, early 90s is with us and Eric, I used to go to the AVNs or the CES shows. How are those back in the day? I want to say hello to uh, your guest. What's his name? Dan, I'm in, I'm in South Dan, Philly. Yeah. Back yeah. by the stadium. Okay, cool. Down by, you know, better, you know, the, you know, the Bank Park. Yeah, our office is on uh, South Fifth Street. Yeah, I am, I am Philly's best known adult film actor. Probably the only one. Me and Ty Jure. But, um, no, that's it. Basically, I'm in Philly. I, I go to the shows I go to with the, I go to consumer show in Vegas, and I used to go to Atlantic City. Going in Atlantic City, and uh, basically, it, and I'm sorry, to, uh, Patrick, for getting being on late. I had a guest that we were watching the Cowboys and Eagles game, so ah, right. Who won? Dallas. Thanks. I had a hundred dollars in the game, so I won a hundred dollars. Uh, I'm a Giants I'm fan, so our season's over now. At least in sixty, I hate the Eagles. My but uncle's anyway, a Giants fan. Yeah, but anyway, that's it. I have no new questions. I just found it interesting. I felt bad I couldn't do it from the beginning. But where in Philly are you? What part of Philly? <laughs> what part of Philly are you in? Okay. I'm in I'm in North Jersey. Our officers are based in Philly. We're on uh, Fifth Street. Yeah. In South Philly. Okay. Yeah. I'm in Packer Park. You know that down in Douglas <laughs> Stadium. Yeah. I don't know Philly all that well. I mean, I go down there. You know, maybe four times a year for our quarterlies or whatever. But uh, our quarterly meetings in person with the counts. Look up my name, Eric Monty. My IMDb. I'm on there. I've been active from '83 to like '90. But mostly the mid '80s, late '80s, early '90s. So that's it. But I just wish I could have been on for the whole thing. So I'm sorry. My apologies. Thank you for your service. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Somebody had to do it, you know? <laughs> Thanks. All right. Excellent. Well, hey, Dan, we sure appreciate you stopping by and, and filling us in on this whole hour. Again, uh, the Exotica for February has been moved to September in uh, Miami, September 17th through the 19th. And you'll keep us up to date on the website um, on uh, on the rest of them. So I'll, I'll, I'll share one thing with you guys. So 
back when I was my, one of my first businesses in the adult industry, right? When I was doing editor, was I started this website called Erotic Bid. I don't know if anybody ever heard of it. It was like a porn eBay. And yeah, we were on the Stern show and our big claim to fame was that to get publicity, we had to do something really, really stupid. And so I was friends with Houston and I don't know if you remember uh, when Houston got her labiaplasty mm -hmm. and we auctioned off a piece of Houston's labia that the late Dennis Hoff ended up buying. But when we did it, right, we had to put the, uh, the labia, it had to be basically herme hermetically sealed in like Lucite because it was medical waste. You can't just sell it, you know, that way. Right. So we were afraid, like when I made the, in, over the years, I've made some pretty ridiculous calls. Like how do you make a giant six foot mechanical penis for people to ride on in the shell, like a bull, or, you know, we need a bouncing house that can hold 10 strippers or whatever the hell the, the things were. But one of my most interesting calls was talking to this guy who made these uh, like Lucite things or whatever. And can you put, um, you know, how does it work? Okay. It's a heat process. Okay. Well, if you had something that was, you know, by organic, would it disintegrate in there? Well, I don't know, you know, and what are you talking about? So I had to tell him the whole story. So we only used half of Houston's labia in it. The other half, I was, when I was purging my house. I was talking to Patrick about it. I actually found, so I don't know if you can read Halsey. So you really can't see it in there. I don't think. Let me see. Oh, it's pretty neat. It's pretty disgusting, actually. My girlfriend threatened to break up with me when she saw it. Like, why do you have this kind of creepy? You have a piece of somebody's pussy in your house, but exactly. you guys, you know, anybody who wants to buy it, it's for yeah. sale. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, I think go we're on gonna... my sexy. I think it, you could go on to Warren Fantasy and sell that crap. People What's sell the their price, then? urine. They sell urine. Oh, they sell all kinds of things. People What's are the reading. price? What's the asking price? They just make us an offer. <laughs> I don't think you can't refuse. <laughs> Eric, you can't be serious. Just stop now, will you? Come on. No. Uh no, no. You don't you have no need for that. Uh no. Um Dan, Aaron, Aaron just texted me he would like to buy it. <laughs> I haven't even been near my phone. Sorry. <laughs> uh so that's a bold out lie. But, uh, Dan, thank you, though. I mean, I appreciate you coming on, and I'm glad Patrick put this together because eventually with this COVID, if, uh, depending on how my September goes now, um, hopefully I'll be able to hit my first Exotica in Miami. And, I'll pull uh, you down there. I'll pull you down there. All right. If you want me to come visit you, you need to come to Exotica. Hey, I'm not saying no. I'm not saying no at all. But remember, I have my show that I got to deal with too in October, and I'm and I have to be at that one. So it just also kind of depends on finances and stuff. But if I can pull it off, you know, I'm going to be down there in Miami. You'll be sitting on my lap most of the show. Who are we That's kidding? It. That's it. I'll be there. I'll be like, but no, I'm going to be there. I love the show so. I'm going to be there at the Exotica. Okay. That's why I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a press release on this one because that's why I've been waiting. Okay. Yeah, no, look, we'd love to meet everybody. And, you know, it was cool meeting you guys on here. And, you know, definitely uh, when the, the world stops burning and everything, you guys make it up to a show. And, um, you know, come on down and, you know, and make sure you find me. You know, Eric, come up to North Jersey. I mean, it's not that far. Central. Edison's only uh, what about an hour from Philly, so I was born in I was born in Englewood. My son was born in Teaneck. Ah, I'm I'm right next to Teaneck, so the holy name he was born in. He's oh. a, he's a okay, well again, Dan, we want to thank you for stopping by and and uh, keep in touch and we'll see you next time. All right, thanks y'all. Take care, you guys. Be safe. <laughs>